Hey guys, Tiffany here of Tiffany Gordon Cosplay, and on today's cosplay tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how I made the eight foot long Amadron blade from Monster Hunter. Uh, it is a massive, massive weapon that took a lot of engineering and a long time to make. It also comes apart in three sections, and I'm gonna try my best to go over how I made this for you. But before we get started, remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And for making this blade, you're going to need a lot of materials. And for this, I used pink insulation foam, two, four, and 10 millimeter EVA foam, foam clay, CPVC pipes, Sharpies, X-Acto knife, box cutter, cost tools circle cutter, cost tools hole drills, a cutting mat, Dremel and sanding drum, sand paper, heat gun, a wood burner, hot wire, contact cement glue, hot glue and hot glue gun, epoxy, wood glue, and of course you're going to need all of your safety gear. And of course I have a 2D blueprint to help you make this as well and it's available on www.tiffanygordoncosplay.com or see the link. And for starting off, when I had the blueprint all laid out, I went ahead and figured out where I was going to segment this blade into three different sections because this is eight feet across. I do need to make it so it can come apart and transport to the company that it's gonna be going to. And also I had to keep in mind that this is going to be a very large weapon and I wanna keep it lightweight. So for the base bone structure, I start off with insulation foam. First, making each of the blade sections, tracing it onto the insulation foam, and then cutting it out with a hot wire. And a reminder that insulation foam is really bad to touch, so safety gear, as well as you do not want to breathe in any of the fumes when cutting this material, so respirator. And here are what the full length of the blade would look like with just the insulation foam. The next part I'm gonna be doing is the interlocking male and female pieces. So that way we can make it come apart. And for this, I'm gonna be using CPVC pipes in two different sizes. Size one half for the male sections and three fourths for the female sections. And for these pieces, you want the female pieces to run the length of the blade because this is what is going to give you the structural support for an eight foot long blade. Cutting each piece at the correct angle that each of the blade sections are, having it where there is a female on both sides and a male section that is going to be permanently attached into one side of the female and then we'll be able to insert into the other side of the female to come apart as well as these pieces will need to be bent to the shape and curvature of the blade. And I did this by the process of using heat resistant gloves, having a heat gun, and applying heat to these sections where I want the pipe to bend. And once I had my correct shape that I wanted, I then glued all of the male sections into their correlating female sections with epoxy. After waiting 24 hours for the glue to dry, you then can place each of your pipe sections on top of their correlating insulation foam section, and then you will want to trace that pipe on top of it, and then cut it out using a box cutter. Once done, you can then insert the piece where it goes, and then glue it in place using hot glue. And it looked like this once I was done. I will also note that for the actual handle part of the blade, I did also attach it at this point, and it was a one inch CPVC pipe. Now for wrapping each of the insulation foam pieces, and for this, I traced each section onto two millimeter EVA foam and cut it out using an X-Acto knife. And after doing a light heat treat to the foam, I was able to attach the EVA foam onto the insulation foam using wood glue. Applying the wood glue to the top of the insulation foam and then putting the EVA foam on top and then weighing it down with either weights or books until fully hardened. Please note that you cannot use contact cement glue for this process as contact cement glue will end up eating and disintegrating all of your insulation foam. 
And here's what the three sections on the right looked like, as well as on the left, all of the blade together. Now that all of our bone structure is made for the blade, we can finally start working on all of the actual detail parts on the blade. And for doing this, I ended up having my blueprint in sectioning off and labeling each of the individual different shapes on the blade and then traced each of those onto 10 millimeter EVA foam and cut out with a box cutter. And don't forget to mirror all of your pieces so you can have it on the other side as well. Next, I cut edges at a 45 where two halves would meet together, or I scored them depending on which piece they were, as well as going to the workbench and sanding some of the edges round. And when all of the pieces were done, I then used contact cement glue to apply to both halves that I want to attach together, wait for them to fully dry, and then slowly start attaching the two halves together. And when they were attached, I then went to the workbench and with a sanding drum, lightly sanded the crease so that way it was no longer noticeable. Once I had my main sections made, I then could see where they sat against the bone structure parts of the blade and could cut away using a hot wire to make sure that they could interlock to the blade correctly. And then used contact cement glue only on the EVA foam parts to attach the pieces together. And here's what the very top section of the blade looks like once done, as well as the middle section. I will also note at this time, any exposed insulation foam, I did end up wrapping with two millimeter EVA foam. For the bottom section, there is a little bit more detail with the handle as well as a circular section. And for that, I ended up cutting a bunch of circles out using both cost tools, circle cutter and hole drill, and then carving them to the shape that I want and sanding them. And then attached it as well as a little bit other details to the handle section of the blade. And then there was the giant circle section on the bottom of the blade, and for this, I ended up cutting all of the larger sections of the circle with Cost Tools Circle Cutter, and then using their hole drill to get all of the center sections cut. Cutting each of them in half and then layering them up so it gave it a little bit more dimension, and then carving it so it was at a slight angle and sanded to what I wanted. Now I can finally attach all the pieces to the bottom section, applying contact cement glue and slowly attaching each of the pieces. And here's what the bottom section looked like so far. For the very, very bottom section, the pommel of the handle, there's this kind of weird diamondy shape. And I figured out how with a paper model to make the shape into two sections, cut it out of four millimeter EVA foam, and then glued it together. adding two millimeter EVA foam parts for details and attached it in place. Now that all of our main pieces are done, I then did a light heat treat onto all of our newly added EVA foam with a heat gun. And then I wanted to distress the piece. And for this, I actually used using file brush cleaners specifically scraping back and forth so it would rip apart the foam and really give it a grimified and nasty Monster Hunter texture feel to the surface. And for even more details in all of the kind of line streaky parts of the section, I went with a wood burner 
burning out all of those sections to really make it nasty there. And the very last step for all of this, once it was complete, was to touch up any of the cracks and seams that had slowly come apart just because this was a massive project. And for this, I used foam clay, the process of applying water and then putting your foam clay down and then applying more water and smoothing it out to hide your seam. And the very last step before the entire blade was officially completely made was to check the inserts, make sure it all fit together. If there was any slight looseness, I ended up adding a two millimeter EVA foam to the tip of the mill sections. This way it made it a little bit more held together and then the blade was complete. And here's all the pieces individually as well as a little video of how I put them all together. And that guys is how I made the Umdrum Blade from Monster Hunter. I hope you found this video helpful and if so let me know in the comments, like this video and subscribe to the channel as well as a big thank you to all of my sponsors and all of my legendary supporters, you members here on YouTube. And I will see you for our next tutorial for the Omidron Blade which will be how I painted it. So stay tuned for that. Much love!